from blood trenched X Men and chilling horrors to painful comedies and a lot of movies about grief, these are the best and worst movies of 2017 so far. Just a reminder, I'm only going by Australian release dates, and remember, this list is just my opinion. If you agree or disagree with any of my choices, then please comment below. We'll start with the worst of the worst, starting with The Mummy, a dour, lifeless slog comprised of nothing but bland exposition and world building, abysmal characterization, and tedious action set pieces, even if Sophia Batella is incredible as The Mummy. <laughs> Rings was somehow worse than The Ring 2, whilst Resident Evil The Final Chapter is overflowing with horribly shot action, plot holes, and continuity errors, but I shouldn't be complaining, I didn't lose an arm for it. Next up, the insultingly stupid Triple X, The Return of Xander Cage, with its ludicrous action set pieces and an infuriatingly smug performance by Vin Diesel. King Arthur Legend of the Sword bored me to tears, and Assassin's Creed is a bland, confusing slog with pathetic action set pieces. Passengers. Passengers is so frustrating because most of it is actually kind of brilliant. It's gripping, powerful, and poses challenging moral dilemmas, but it's all undermined by a lazy, contrived, and cliched finale, which feels like a complete betrayal of everything that came before it. Both Chips and Baywatch were failed reboots of nostalgic properties with insultingly juvenile humour, and Unforgettable was a lazy, cliched thriller with a truly pathetic ending. Transformers The Last Night, the worst Transformers movie to date, with insufferable dialogue, worthless characters, and embarrassing and often sexist jokes. The Bye Bye Man, an embarrassing, unscary slog, with pathetic actors spouting excruciatingly painful dialogue with an unthreatening monster. Bye Bye Man. Collateral Beauty, someone really thought it was a good idea to make a whimsical movie just in time for the holidays about a depressed, grieving man being gaslit by his friends who were then supposed to root for. It would be the most morally broken movie of the year if it wasn't for my number one pick, a movie so horrible that if I could transform my hatred and rage into a form of energy, I could power the whole of Australia for the next 700 fucking years. And number one is Fifty Shades Darker. Yeah, none of you are surprised. It's boring as hell, with ugly direction, embarrassing dialogue, a non-existent plot, and with all the sex appeal of roadkill. Couple that with disgusting morals about returning to unhealthy and unsafe relationships, and you have the worst movie of the year so far. Right, let's wipe that from our minds with the very best of the year. Starting off with their finest, an utterly charming delight about the power of filmmaking, about how the right film at the right time can move, inspire and comfort. It's everything I love about cinema and so much more. Next up, Keanu Reeves' ultra-violent John Wick Chapter 2 with its heart-pounding yet exquisitely shot killing sprees and Hounds of Love was one of the most intense, morbid and gripping abduction thrillers I've ever seen. Free Fire was ingeniously simple, and the Belco experiment was grindhouse exploitation at its finest. Next up, Con McCarthy's eerie atmospheric bleak and often meditative zombie pick, The Girl with All the Gifts, and the Lego Batman movie, a hilarious satire of the Caped Crusader. Silence, Martin Scorsese's reflection on faith. Silence is a quietly powerful movie that poses challenging questions in which there are no easy answers. Jackie. This haunting and devastating Jackie O biopic is a powerful exploration of grief, legacy and loss. The Lure, a Polish musical with bloodthirsty mermaid strippers, The Lure is one of the most bizarre movies of the year. T2 Trainspotting, a satisfying follow-up to an undeniable cult classic, exploring damaged people dealing with their demons with a witty script that's loaded with pathos. I don't feel at home in this world anymore, an ingenious dark comedy which combines quirky and humorous sensibilities with horrifying violence and gore seamlessly. Another movie which beautifully balances massively contrasting tones is Colossal, which juggles themes of alcoholism and violent relationships with a gigantic monster, and miraculously it all works thanks to a brilliant Brilliant screenplay. Manchester by the Sea, a heart-wrenching grief drama with an engrossing screenplay and breathtaking performances. 
Split. M. Night Shyamalan's imaginative and often terrifying Split is easily his best film since Unbreakable, with a breathtaking performance by James McAvoy. He's done awful things to people and he'll do awful things to you. It Comes at Night, a masterfully constructed psychological horror flick which abandons the genre's cliches to give us one of the year's most bleak, grim, and disturbed flicks. Raw, a morbid, bloody, and twisted tale of self-discovery that combines blood-drenched terrors with a surprising amount of humour. Okja, a wonderfully bizarre yet moving satire of the meat industry with an immensely watchable cast. Next up, Landermine, the heart-stopping intense and gripping story of the German POWs who were forced to clear minefields after the Second World War. Moonlight, more than deserving of its best picture win, Moonlight is one of the most beautiful, uplifting and heartbreaking coming of age tales I've ever seen. Logan. Logan strips away the convoluted timelines and cliches of the X-Men universe to give us a deeply moving, intimate and profound tale of a man who's lost everything, desperately searching for redemption. My Life as a Courgette, despite its incredibly grim and depressing subject, the lives of orphans whose lives are full of death, suicide, drugs, alcoholism and abuse, My Life as a Courgette is also a heartwarming and uplifting experience, thanks to a warm and human screenplay which reminds us of the power of love and compassion. I never thought it'd be possible to have a life where I could be happy, <laughs> but because of you guys, it is. Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman is exactly what the DCU desperately needed. Gal Gadot is flawless and the action set pieces are amazing, with a sequence in No Man's Land almost certainly going down in history as one of cinema's finest moments. It's about humanity's flaws, its evil and its ugliness, but also its beauty and its courage. It's such an amazing movie, with such an undeniable sincerity and love for its source material that makes it damn near impossible not to love. Next up, Jordan Peele's Get Out. Get Out is a relevant satire of modern racism with the year's most intelligent, layered, complex and nuanced screenplay. And at number one, A Monster Calls. I cannot praise this emotionally exhausting masterpiece about a young child coping with the loss of his mother with the help of an imaginary monster enough. Whoa. Whoa, indeed. With its powerful adult messages and heartbreaking performances, A Monster Calls reduced me to a weeping wreck and it's easily the year's finest. I'm afraid. Of course you are afraid, but you will make a slip. For this is why you called me. Come on. 